Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to see our future videos. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode uh, 126. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> so just coming, crying, coming, <laughs> coming right along here. So uh, today is kind of a let's get grounded kind of day. So uh, I'm going to actually respond a little bit to some of our comments and uh, bring it back in a little bit. So let's talk about RV love and RV truth. Well, here we go. And um, so let's start off right now. This radio show and RVs is not here to stroke you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yes, we love RVing. Yes, we love to travel. Yes, it's great to get out there and, and go from the different locations in the United States and Canada and, and Mexico and Alaska and all that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we love it. However, there's a lot of things that you need to know about. And there's kind of a cult out there of um, misery loves company. And uh, so occasionally I'll get these notes like, Robbie, you're a Debbie Downer. Or, or uh, the last comment I got on the last show was somebody thought I financially had to go into an RV and so I hate RVing. And uh, absolutely not true and not the case at all. Um, and he says, oh, I heard it on one of your shows. Uh, no, you heard us talking about it for someone else. But uh, no. No. Do we dislike RVing? No, not at all. We love it. In fact, we'd love to get back out there. What we're doing is we talk about lifestyles here. So we, we're not out here to stroke you. If you want to become an RVer, we hope you do. And we hope you enjoy it. And we hope it's a great adventure. However, there's so many channels out there that are um, <laughs> nickel and diamond you as you're learning so you can pay for their playtime in their rv adventures and uh the worst ones are the ones that say yeah well this and this and this and, and we got a special little report we did but you can only see it on our patron when you see that <laughs> then you better run and the other ones will be memberships um those are, are just doozies. And, and hey, you know, give them credit. They're trying to make some money online to afford their lifestyle. But it's really coming down to is we want you to afford our lifestyle and we want you to pay for it. And by the way, for you to produce a channel like ours will take years. Or if you didn't get in in the early days where it was easy, uh, the start of channel is not that easy. So you think you're going to go out there and make a fortune um with a YouTube channel, uh, think again. Uh, however, when you do have a channel that's totally focused on your niche, which ours is not, and so another comment goes, well, you you don't have a channel that's really big and stuff. And it's like, I, uh, yeah, I know that. I've said that. And I don't expect it to because Outdoor Travel Channel is much more than just RVing. We don't live and breathe RVing. And so... Uh, the thing is, is uh, these channels you watch, it's 100% every day they wake up and go, how can we talk about RVing again and stay very niche, which is good, and uh, uh, and make it an interesting video so people will watch it and we can make lots of money. Uh, I don't wake up every morning and do that. Uh, usually when I'm done with RV Talk Radio, I'm moving on to dozens and dozens of everything, radio stations, 
um, poopy bags. Uh, we have all kinds of other things we do. Uh, so beyond RVing that no, we don't live and breathe this stuff and no, nor are we against it. And, uh, but if you want a, a show that just strokes you because you made the decision to live in an RV or thinking about it, this is not the show for you. If you want an RV show that it, when we, we stick with lifestyle, we don't really teach uh, how to build things or maintain things. We'll talk about experiences and stuff, but um, this is not the show where we're going to stroke you and say, oh, your decision is great. No matter what, your decision is great because you decided to be an RVer. You're just asking for a show that will uh, embrace what you're thinking um, without helping you with your thinking. And so this is not the show for you. I agree. And uh, yes, we'll never be a big, big, giant show. And we'll never have really big subscription numbers. And I don't make a living from this. It's just spare income. Cool. Cool. Um, Really, if I make a little extra dough, I'll probably take my wife out to dinner and go to the casino. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. <laughs> and, um, so, if this is uh, if you're looking for someone who's going to pat you on the back and say RVing is just a wonderful world out there, or buy a van and poop in a bucket, uh, and and you expect me to say, "Wow, that sounds like it's really cool," I'm not going to do it. And this is not the show for you. However, if you want a show that really loves RVing and is grounded and uh, we'll talk about the things you need to know, uh, like the last show we did, we talked about uh, an article that we didn't actually even write. We just read it to you. Um, and uh, that's why I was getting some of the comments like, <laughs> it's like, guys, I didn't even write that article. I was just reading it to you um, to tell you the things you need to know about either buying an RV or or what the RV uh, uh, costs is and things like that. And uh, even that article, I thought, oh my gosh, the numbers are kind of low. Because every time Sherry and I have looked at RVs, the numbers are like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Getting up there. Um, we own an RV, by the way. I own an RV. I love our RV. Every time I get an RV, it's like, oh, I love this RV. Um, but you need to know... Uh, uh, like Sherry and I were underwater in our RV. We bought ours new. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, and when I get up there, I've got a bunch of things I got to probably fix and redo or clean up. And uh, uh, because it's, it's been sitting a little bit, it's fading a little bit. I'll probably have to have it uh, all spiffed up and detailed. And, um, you know, probably have to chase a mouse or two out of it. <laughs> but uh, um, it's not glamorous. And it's not cost-effective. And uh, there's a lot of things you need to know about that because you get out there and uh, I don't know how many videos I've seen where people said, oh, this hasn't really been the best investment that we ever did with uh, anything. <laughs> it's true. So anyway, guys, for those uh, naysayers, those bad mouthers, those ones that want me to uh, stroke them because they're RVers or no matter, um, uh, there'll be times where I, I will just say, hey, that sounds great. It sounds wonderful. Yes, there would be nothing better than to wake up in the morning and drag your butt out of your van and get in your lounge chair and, and listen to the peace and quiet. Uh, totally agree with that. Um, and then as you sit there, the reality hits. Uh, I need some water. Uh, running low on food. My poop bucket's getting full. And, uh, you know... Uh, Suddenly, responsibility starts kicking in, and uh, that's what they don't talk about. Um, <laughs> nearest water is five or ten miles away. Um, yeah, it just goes on and on. And, uh, you know, maybe it's been five, ten days since you really got to take a shower. Probably getting time to start thinking about that. Where are you going to take that shower? Uh, go find yourself a... A, a really good sanitary truck stop. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> Can't, you need to know this stuff. It's like they don't talk about it. They just say, oh, come join the lifestyle. Join us. 
Really what they should be holding a sign is misery likes loves company. And uh, however, let's flip it. There is nothing cooler than saying, what's outside my door today? Uh, I love that uh, kind of saying with our RV. Open a door. One day it's the ocean. Open it. It's the Olympic Peninsula. You open it again. It's the desert. Um, that's wonderful. It's great. Um, and I'll never regret any of our full timing. And no, I, uh, Sherry and I were never forced into an RV because of finances. However, we have met many people who have. And it was a great decision and it helped them get back on their feet. We used our RV to get back um, to, um, before I retired, we moved into it early to uh, even tuck away a little bit more money. And it gave us a chance to work out any bugs of how we wanted things to be laid out uh, and stored and all that stuff about six months before we hit the road. Um, out of necessity, didn't have to do it. Uh, common sense it just made sense to see well let's see how well we live in this thing full time before I retired dear uh, before we hit the road um, and it worked out great so uh, yeah so feel free to maybe in the show before look at some of the comments and you'll see kind of what I'm talking about is uh, uh, people will watch this and say why well, did we already know you're just going to be negative on this show no, I'm going to be practical on this show. I'm going to tell you the truth. And the truth is, Sherry and I love RVing, love travel. However, we love to tell RV truth. And I think in the long run, for those of you who are definitely uh, thinking about doing this, that because we brought up all these things, you'll have the best situation of your life if you choose to go RVing. And before you decide to do the nomad thing, like living in vans and stuff like that, you may still do it and power to you, and we certainly understand why you would. However, you're not going to be surprised when you go, <laughs> I remember Rob choking about the bucket and I'm pooping in a bucket. Or I remember Rob saying, that yes, this was great, but I'm running out of water or all this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, some people have their process down great. And then uh, others will go, oh, I need to get out of this lifestyle. So uh, anyway, I want to make sure I responded to all that. For those that just feel like uh, Rob's got this negative thing for you, it's like, no, it's a grounded kind of advice, uh, love, uh, concern, and uh, what I want to prove to you, and I'm going to do it in this show, is I'm actually, I found a new video, uh, another channel I was watching, doesn't have to do with RVing, that just warms my heart. It's about it's a vlog, it's a family of four, and uh, there has nothing to do with RVing, but they just bought a house, and I want to play a, a, a section of it of people have not lost the American dream. It's okay. Do not think you have to replace the American dream with living in an RV or a van down by the river. It's, uh, it's different for everybody. And I want to prove to you that millennials, young adults, still very much live the American dream. And here's the video. Oh, now, before I begin, I should say these are the Dashleys. That's the name of their channel. And they just went from a townhouse and just bought a house. And this is, the video is them just getting into their new house. And, you know, of course, you never have enough furniture and all that kind of stuff. But um, look into her eyes, listen to her voice, and tell me the the cuteness of it. So anyway, here it is, the Dashleys. I had like the sweetest moment with George. We got home from the park at like 9.30 and he looked at me and he said, mom, let's go sit outside in the dark. So we sat outside and he just wanted to snuggle and look at the clouds and find the moon. And it, it was just so fun to, I don't know, this has just been something down and I've been working for, like having like a home that's not attached to another home. Like just like having our home 
and we finally got it and we had so much to do and the kids needed to go to bed but it was just so nice to like just sit there and just kind of like I don't know like have a moment of like a, a moment of winning or recognition where I just like sat there and just felt proud of myself and proud of us and proud of George and James like it was it's been like a hard road and we hadn't made we didn't make a lot of money for a long time we didn't make any money for a long time and just we just always kind of hoped or believed or just mostly hoped that one day everything we were doing for our business would one day like help us to to like buy a home where our dogs could play in our yard and our kids could be not on a busy road and it finally happened and I just I might even just cry thinking about it like it's just the sweetest feeling to finally have like a goal you've been working for come true. So the point to that whole show there that I showed you was one is <laughs> Yes, you can have a vlog channel that does really well and not have to be in an RV to do it. Uh, they have a very successful uh, YouTube channel. And two, um, that uh, uh, there's still people out there that are really looking forward to getting into their first home and, and working their way to it. And you can see that they work their way to it. And... Uh, 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 I'll just kind of leave it at that. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess I better make sure we recognize some of our sponsors. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, They'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. So uh, before I forget, I will let you know that the Dashleys, uh, I'll make sure and put a link to their channel. Uh, I think it's only fair if I reference to anybody's channels. I always make sure and put a link in the description. So a uh, very cute couple. They're hilarious. And they're just your average Joe. It has nothing to do with RVing. It has everything to do with this everyday life, being young and just trying to make it in this world, uh, having kids and having a home and and all that kind of stuff, but I just find their humor to be hilarious. And uh, uh, I guess it strikes me because I, I keep seeing so many of the young people kicking and screaming that it's so hard. And uh, yet I, I see a, a young millennial couple like that that says, uh, yeah, it's hard, but we can kick their ass and do it. <laughs> and they did. So uh, good for them. So, of course, I got to get caught up in my RV gossip. And uh, one of the uh, things that threw me just the other day, I don't watch them that often because uh, they just kind of drive me nuts. But Driving and Vibin' uh, just did a show. I guess they've been redoing a, a streamlined stream. Oh, pff, yeah, a, a trailer. And uh, just found out she's pregnant. And uh, I just caught part of the show. I for some reason, I just can't make it through a whole show <laughs> but uh, uh uh probably like these people that think i'm real negative on rv can't make it through our whole show and i understand <laughs> but uh anyway so they're complaining about all oh, the new rv we, we spent months rebuilding i get the impression uh feels kind of small <laughs> with the baby coming along <laughs> you, you think <laughs> anyway um but uh yeah uh don't know what to say about that is the fact is yes it is small and it really feels small once that little red rat's trying to crawl around and walk around and uh i don't care if you even have a monstrous fifth wheel it's still gonna feel too small and uh uh yeah 
amazing. So uh, see, the other thing I was watching was uh, uh, Dan and Jen Nevada. They're doing a show about um, kind of like I was doing, kind of uh, referring to a lot of the uh, comments they got. And uh, one of the things that uh, they, they were mentioning a lot of the same things we were about uh, the realities of RVing and wanted to make sure that he recognizes, uh, they both recognize that there is a lot of RV channels out there that are just trying to sell the cult, sell that you need to do this, you need to do this. And even they said, and it says our channel is not designed for you to come out and do this. We're just showing you our life. And, uh, and that's cool. And so they're very good about, it's like, okay, this is what we're doing, how we're doing it, but it's not for everybody. And so uh, they're pretty, I have to say, more grounded than some of the other shows I watch. Uh, where others, when you see them, just say, you got to come out here and do this. And by the way, we have a membership place where you can see special videos we made just for you. Or uh, please make sure and sign up for our Patreon, <laughs> where we have special stuff just for you. And there isn't a thing that they talk about in those videos that you can't get a free video just through the normal YouTube channel. They'll inform you what you need to know about repairs or certain kind of things with memberships or or staying in thousand trails there is like two billion uh videos out there of becoming a, a, a thousand trails membership <laughs> and uh, uh it's the same stuff so uh yeah anyway don't pay for memberships people don't pay for patreon unless you thoroughly thoroughly love 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 the channel you're watching I uh, I actually donate uh, off and on to SV Delos, which is uh, some young folks that have been sailing for six or seven years now around the un world, and uh, because they do such a good job, um, you know I, I I'm comfortable uh, donating to them, and uh, that's really rare for me. Ranger Rob poopy bags are different. Why? They are designed deeper and wider and have handles also. Our bags are lemon scented and not dusty. If you truly want a quality poopy bag and don't want to pay more, go to Amazon or RangerRobPoopyBags.com right now. Get the best for your best friend. So there you go. There's our gimmick, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. <laughs> so to help us afford living in a house. <laughs> Please help pay for my mortgage <laughs> by RV, uh, well, by uh, Ranger Rob poopy bags. Uh, no, RV, uh, RV travel and the things that we did RVing was actually my motivator to create that product uh, because I just there's parks that have lousy bags that you have to use uh, in their little parks. Two is I wanted a big bag that was uh, good for big and little dogs. I wanted the handles, which was so easy to tie off. Have you ever tried to, if you got a dog, you probably know the one, uh, the bags that don't have handles, and you got to try to tie a knot in the top of those things, uh, was just kind of a pain in you know what. Anyway, that's one of the things you really love about the Ranger Rob poopy bags is uh, uh, you turn them inside out. They stay away from your hands. You just tie them off. And if you have to carry them for a distance while you're hiking or something, you got handles. It's kind of nice. So, uh, yeah, check them out. They're affordable. You can find them on Amazon. They're called Ranger Rob. That's one full word, Ranger Rob poopy bags. And uh, uh, I didn't create them just to have fun. And I didn't create them just to make money. I created them because I wanted a good dog waste bag. And uh, so, yeah, go for it, guys. Get yourself some Ranger Rob poopy bags. And you can pay for my RV travel <laughs> someday if I ever go. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to say that. Yeah. You know, there's, there's another thing I thought I'd bring up, uh, especially from some of the goofy comments I got on the last show, is uh, uh, this is a radio show or entertainment show. And so... Yes, we talk about RVs. That's our main subject. Um, and so we will talk about subjects that will get people to come watch the show or listen to it. So uh, unfortunately, when you talk about RV disasters or RV this or 
my RV blew up, all that stuff. And you you put a little click thing on there and people go, oh, I got to see it. And they click on in and and, um, it's all about putting on the show. It's it's a entertainment. So I need to remind actually some of the folks that will come in there and and, and they think such a personal thing like Rob really just has it out for RVers and stuff. And it's like, no, it's you guys, if you really, 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 really listen, you'll see us bouncing back and forth from pro to con, pro to con. Um, and I, how many times have I said in this show, Sherry and I love RVing. Do we want to be like all the fluff shows and stroke you uh, because that's the way you're going to, you're thinking about going? Uh, no, uh, we're, we're going to be informative. We're going to make you think we're going to make you analyze really what I want. Um, and, uh, and I have these concerns of people are using it as a scapegoat to uh, escape the build your family, build your career, uh, build your skills and stuff like that because you can get away with doing this kind of lifestyle when you're young. And then what I'm trying to warn you about is when you get in your 40s and 50s and 60s, uh, how many times are you going to say, what if I would have learned how to be an electrician? What if I would have got certified as a welder? What if I would have finished school? What, what, what? And now I've got this problem like, how in the hell am I going to retire? And I don't know what the Social Security and retirement situation is going to look like uh, when you guys get to our age. And uh, yeah, I guess that's why you guys all are kind of interested in this socialism stuff where the government will take care of me and I'll just get a check. And then I can just travel the United States in my little van and bucket and uh, get my little check because all of us will be paid the same. <laughs> It ain't going to happen. Uh, it just is not going to happen. It can't happen because they can't even afford to do that. Uh, but you can wish all you want. Ain't going to happen. Well, just to change the subject a little bit, I went over to Creativity RV. And of course, it was about, I say one video they did yesterday was about the USB electronics she uses. And of course, the next day is like, Oh yeah, Prime Day is here. And by the way, don't forget to click on the link uh, in my description to go to all the hot deals because there's uh, Prime Days made them even better deals. And uh, seemed really concerned about making sure that you used the link that she had below. <laughs> Funny thing is, I went to her description. She <laughs> didn't put it in there right, so it's not a hot link. So uh, she'll go, "Oh, I don't understand why it didn't work." It's like, "Why well, you, you need to put?" Uh, I'll warn you now http semicolon slash slash in front of your address and it will light up so uh anyway but um there i i helped the nomad and so uh uh when she gets back from picking blueberries <laughs> she can come back and fix her description so uh, i'm telling you it's over it's so obvious it's uh uh, so you need to hurry up and get out of there, follow her link so you can help pay for her travels. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah. And to be fair, I did put a link to her channel down below. So, yeah, get over there quick and go buy some of her stuff. My next RV gossip is back to uh, Dan and Jen, Nevada. Just uh, I was taking a break and I watch videos <laughs> when I can. Try to catch some of them. And, of course, back to Dan and Jen felt like they needed to do another video about RV etiquette. Follow the rules. What? I thought it was RV freedom. You can do anything you want. I don't want to be part of the corporate scene anymore. Yet, everywhere you go, there's rules to be followed. It appears that not all of you guys are following the rules. Come on. So, uh, you know, there's basic ones. In, uh, and they were talking more about our national parks or campgrounds and RV parks, where I guess there are other etiquette. Um, I think we're going to start calling those guys the RV police. And uh, I think we should paint their bus, you know, uh, uh, black and white and maybe some lights in the top. And it's like, uh oh, <laughs> Janet Dinner, <laughs> Jenner here. It's the RV police. They're the snitchers. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll call them the Snitcher Channel, RV Snitchers. Do 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 do. 
So uh, actually, it's good because it sounds like it's getting chronic out there where people are not following the rules. They just think they can do anything they want. And they're throwing garbage around and playing music and working on their RVs and uh, RV park and on and on and on. So apparently they feel it's necessary to keep making these videos to tell people what RV etiquette is all about. And uh, I know that their hearts are in the right place. And I know that they're trying to make it a better uh, environment for everybody and remind everybody that just because you're an RVer doesn't mean there isn't rules and regulations to follow. Dan and Jen also uh, have a little segment on their video that talks about dogs. And this is my pet peeve, and uh, I'm actually glad that they did a little segment on it. So I'm going to play that here in a second. But they uh, talk about people picking up after their dogs when they poop and not leaving the bags behind for thinking someone's going to pick up after them. That's one of the reasons that inspired me to create the Ranger Rob poopy bags. Because uh, one is I wanted a bag that was easy to use. Two, uh, you can put either in your pocket. And now we have them in rolls. We have a little distributor thing you can take with you. Um, but I wanted something that was easy to tie up. And after you tie it, you still have these little handles to make it easy to uh, carry around. I think some of the ones you see, is they'll, they'll pick up the dog's poop, turn it inside out, and it's really hard to tie the top off. So they just leave them. And it's like, come on. So I can't make picking up poop any easier than a Range Rob poopy bag. So let's play that clip from uh, Dan and Jen right now. And by the way, uh, before I start it, a link to that video is in our description, to be fair. Uh, we try to, anytime we quote one of these shows, pro or negative, pro or, ne uh, pro or con, uh, we make sure we put a link to their site. Some important considerations with pets especially are uh, pick up your dog's poop. Okay, this is like dogs, unless you have a monkey or a giraffe or something. Cats are usually inside and they're not pooping around in other people's. Dogs pick up their poop. I have been a caveat to that. Pick up their poop, but don't just leave the little bags around. Pick up that bag of poop and take it to yes. a receptacle and yes. throw it away. It is not the, the camp host, the ranger, the management, the, the, the pool guy's job to pick up your dog's excrement. No. Please, please pick that up. Uh, and also, try, try. I say try because you can't. you don't have complete control usually over your dog and where it wants to go. Try not to let it poop and pee in or directly adjacent to people's sites. When we were at Wilderness Lakes in California, we had multiple people. Their dogs seemed to love to stop right in front of our windshield here and pee or poop. Mm -hmm. uh, try not to let them do that. Uh, I've, sometimes it happens and that's fine. But try, try, take them to the dog park, take them, you know, let them pee in the middle of the road, but, you know, don't walk into somebody's site and go, pfft, or let your dog walk into somebody's, don't do that. Um, and then one last thing, barking dogs, don't leave your dogs inside your coach barking all day. Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't leave your dogs in your coach all day if you don't have, like, air conditioning or whatever. That's a totally different subject, but we've seen so many people all day long because they're out having fun. Either... Those people aren't the brightest in the world and they don't realize that their dogs do that when they're gone or they don't care. It's rude and it's upsetting and it's like, you know, and, and it's, it's like, don't, don't do that. And uh, we've uh, honestly heard and I think we've actually experienced a dog kept jumping up and honking the horn yeah. <laughs> of the rig um, because the people were gone and he, it was a pretty big dog and he was running around up there and he kept hitting the horn. So, yeah. I mean, the, the owners don't know when the dogs are gone. What's happening well, necessarily? They, they may not know. Yeah, but so there you go. You heard it straight from uh, Dan and Jen, the RV police. Uh, pick up after your dog, and uh, don't leave the bags, and also don't leave your dogs in your RVs if they're barking dogs and stuff. Um, I remember actually when we had a trouble with Cinder when she was a pup, we weren't sure if she was barking or not, so we bought uh, a little uh, internet camera that we could. Uh, experiment and leave the RV and go for walks and stuff and then monitor her and see how she was acting. And uh, at first as a young pup or young uh, dog or teenage dog, she was barking. Uh, now she's quiet as a mouse, um, but she's also seven, almost seven years old. But uh, 
uh, yeah, dogs will grow out of that. But you had to be, uh, until then, uh, the places that you're going, you need to take the dog with you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, barking dogs can be very irritating. But not picking up your uh, after your dog is even irritating too. And at least I came out and did something about it. So now I'm asking you to do something about it. Try to arrange your raw poopy bags and you will find out uh, that we're making the process a, just a little bit better. So yeah, check them out. Go to Amazon, check out Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. So I have to admit, I, I watched a little bit more of the <laughs> Dan and Jen video that I put a link to in the description of their etiquette stuff. And when I watched their show, show all I can say is they must be the worst neighbors ever. Because, uh, uh, I know in all RV parks, there's times where certain things happen and you know, it's like, oh God, I don't, I don't want to make, close this hatch right now. It's, you know, 11 o'clock at night or, um, I used to be a smoker and stuff, but, um, you know, usually if I was smoking and realized my smoke was going into someone's rig or something, I'd find a better place and stuff. But anyway, they seem like the one, the most judgmental people I have ever met. Um, just listing off all these things, and uh, uh, I guess I don't mind it for awareness, but uh, uh, I almost feel like there are RVers that to spend a whole, whole time being angry. And uh, of course, you guys probably say that about our show here. Um, but when I'm RVing, it's like uh, there's a little bit more. I'd have to say a little bit more leniency against a lot of things because a lot of funny circumstances happen. Uh, maybe you have to get up in the middle of the night and change a, a tank because uh, your propane ran out. Weird things happen that don't normally happen in a household. And how people act in a pool or a laundry mat. Uh, yeah, insanely crazy stuff. Uh, but the bottom line is you're amongst the public. And... Uh, uh, some of these rules, some of the things you expect. If you own a home, uh, you can expect. I expect people to act a certain way in my pool. I, if somebody was using my laundry, uh, it's you know it's my stuff. Uh, I have the right to say. But um, yeah, they're the kind of people. Is like uh, I could see me in an RV park going, "Ooh, we got RV police next door. It's going to be miserable until they leave." So. Uh, uh, don't be one of those people. <laughs> Even I mean, I definitely believe in following the rules and all that stuff, but I also know like, it's like, there's a lot of things where you have to be a little bit more forgiving. And uh, I was in many, many, many times full-timing and, and some of the stories that they told about uh, are true, but you need to be tolerant. Yes, Let's try that word again. Tolerant. And uh, uh, you're not better than the next person. And uh, and I hope you know in this show, too, we don't think we're better or, or anybody else is better than the other. We're just pointing out all the different observations we see so you can make good decisions for yourself. I do appreciate their video for talk, going through the etiquette, but uh, they seem pretty obsessed with it. And uh, like I said, they're probably the worst RV neighbors ever until they leave. <laughs> so, that's my impression anyway. So I'm going to do a total subject change here and talk about a discovery I made. So some of you do it and some people don't. But <clears throat> one of the things I, uh, when we're RVing and I do it in a household too, is I want to talk about coffee. <laughs> yes, good old coffee. Yeah, coffee. So anyway, coffee, uh, I switched over to Keurig. So in my RV, I use the single-use uh, Keurigs. Uh, I like those because there was a time where you go out there and you get different brands, and if they weren't Keurig, they wouldn't work in your new machine. They've changed that since then. But the single-use Keurigs could use pretty much any kind of K-cup. And it's great. So uh, I do a lot more shopping now. And, and of course, I look for good deals, uh, whether I'm at Safeway or wherever I go. I, of course, Costco, I watch really closely. How much does it cost per K-cup? 
sorry, trying to lose my voice a little bit here. Um, so my observation is uh, K cups can be between 30, which is really on the low side, up to over 50 cents a K cup. And uh, boy, if you really do the math, and it depends how much you really love coffee, uh, I love coffee. Um, but I love the convenience of K cups. Uh, the days of making a pot of coffee, five scoops of uh, my U ban, and and it sits there all day long, gets a little thicker and thicker, and then the pot gets kind of cloudy looking. And it's like, uh, anyway, the K cups just turn out to be very convenient, but they're costly. So I recently uh, cruising through the different. Well, I, I think I saw it actually on uh, YouTube, uh, where you can get K cup caps, the tops. You go what? So let's uh, if you get a K cup, let's say you buy a um, uh, hundred box of a hundred, whatever. Anyway, what you can do is when you're done with those, set up a little small box and put all the ones you've used in that box. Then sit down for a day and then cut the tops off. Take a paring knife and skim the tops, open them up, throw off that top, tap them in a garbage and get the coffee out of them and rinse them out and rinse them out good and then let them dry out for about two days. Well, first of all, you'll realize there's, you know, there's coffee in there and two, they'll dry out and you'll see that there's actually a filter inside each one of them. Anyway, so you want to dry those out. <clears throat> And it's no big deal. Just kind of give you a processing box. I kind of created one. And then you can buy uh, 50 to 100 K-cup caps uh, that allow you to reuse the K-cup. So then uh, look for those hot deals for whatever kind of coffee you like that's the regular grounds. Uh, my personal, I love Colombian coffee and I like Uban. So I bought a big brand new uh uh, can or not cans anymore of uh, coffee and so then you take your k-cups and a, and a spoon or measuring device refill each one that you've dried out grab your little caps and plunk them right on to the top and voila you now have another k-cup with coffee and you paid probably 15 cents to 20 cents per cup k-cup instead of the higher price you have been paying uh, drawbacks. Uh, the K cups, um, they're a little harder plastic and sometimes they'll stick when you go to lift the top up and they'll kind of sometimes carry it. Uh, I found that you can actually reuse those a couple of times if you're really rotating your, your coffee. If you're, if you had one that already had like a hole in it and you refilled it and stuff and it sat for weeks, uh, it probably, you know, your coffee wouldn't be as fresh. But if you're uh, really uh, recycling through your K cups, you, just because you bought a hundred lids doesn't mean you can only do a hundred. You could you reuse those lids a couple of times, and uh, so far, it's been a very easy process. And I guess the big thing I noticed is when I went to Costco yesterday. Typically, I'll go over and buy my hundred, hundred and twenty K cups uh, for like thirty-five to forty dollars for a box, good chunk of change, and I didn't have to do it this time. <laughs> it was like, wow. I wonder how I don't know exactly how much money I'm saving, but I, I'm telling I know I'm saving money, and uh, it really takes the stress away. Also, like running out. Uh, so uh, anyway, so I hope that's an idea for you. Go to Amazon and check out. Uh, no, there, I'm not putting a link in my description. I will just type in K cup caps. Um, or lids, I guess it'd be K cup lids, and you'll see all kinds of them. Just look for the best deal, and uh, they're not very expensive, and uh, have them shipped to wherever you're at, and uh, get in the process of reusing your K cups. And you can actually buy K cups empty, and um, and buy caps, and do the whole thing yourself, and it's still a cost savings. So uh, I hope that's a good little tidbit of information if you really enjoy coffee you really enjoy your keurig uh but you're realizing that those things can be a little bit on the pricey side want to save about 50 percent on how much coffee you're using and still have the privilege of using a keurig get the caps it works well of course in your rv you know it's like oh 
where am I going to store all these things while I'm going through the process? Yeah, I mean, everything's got pros and cons, right? But uh, yeah, give it a try. Get on Amazon, check out K-Cups, uh, lids, and uh, and uh, see what will work for you and give it a try. At least try it, see if it works out for you. It may be a, you won't like the process, but I'm telling you, uh, I'm enjoying it and I'm enjoying the fact that I'm not, I'm spending about, 40 to 50 percent less on coffee cake cups than I was before and I'm pretty happy about that so before I uh, wrap up our show here still got a little bit of time uh, I do want to thank you very much for listening to RV talk radio I do appreciate the feedback pro or con I love constructive feedback this wonderful uh, once again I just uh, I, I am afraid I'm not going to create fluffy shows and um, however I, I still just want to take the time to make sure you understand we love RVing and I can't wait where I can go on long periods of time and go RVing again um, but I'm going to be really glad that when I'm done I can go to a base uh, no doubt about that did I have a bad experience RVing absolutely not I loved every minute of it uh, is there a lot of things that were negative or, or uh, on it yeah but that's where I talked about earlier in the show you got to learn tolerance now I do realize and I can tell you for sure Sherry and I full-timed in 2006 and then we did it again around 2015 and it changed people are different uh, a lot <clears throat> a lot more entitlement out there a lot more arrogance out there uh, all about me kind of people it's changed uh, a lot of uh, it's all ages too, not just certain uh, generations. Uh, but generally, the baby boomer, older folks, still have a little bit of a basis of uh, empathy and a little bit more uh, old-time moralistic kind of stuff that tends to keep most of them calm. But there's exceptions to that rule, big time too. I mean, there's like older folks. You go, where did you grow up? <laughs> And young folks, you just shake your head going, yeah, that was how they were brought up. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, but uh, nothing was cooler than seeing the next destination. Nothing was funner than getting to a new location and discovering all of its little quirks. Uh, it's little restaurants, it's little places to go, the people, especially if you're in like a tourist town and and uh, flavor of each different um, tourist town and specialty foods in certain areas that you go. Foods a little different from Washington State to California. Uh, I never had the chance to go RVing in the South. Um, it's actually on my bucket list and looking forward to different foods. Um, then when you go to places like Vegas, you realize it's a different lifestyle there. It's an adult playground, uh, and you adapt. And uh, sometimes it isn't about the RV location where you're staying as it is the RV took you to a place you wanted to go. So I notice a lot of shows that I uh, talk about etiquette and all that stuff, they keep talking about the RV stay. And uh, I think Sherry and I, we didn't focus so much on the RV park or stay so much other than basics of safety and little amenities as we did where it took us. And sometimes like when you go to Vegas, it's not about the RV parks in, in Vegas with the exception of the five star ones. Um, that it's the fact that you can go there in your RV at an affordable price compared to motels and enjoy the city for what it has to give you and uh in the nightlife and you probably wouldn't uh, not spending all that much time at the rv anyway uh, etiquette and some of the other places where you're going to locations because of their des destination of like maybe uh, uh some mountain ranges some uh, water uh locations the beach whatever were then the RV park is more of an RV park stay or resort. Then, uh, yeah, I could certainly see where you kind of start getting caught up in the RV etiquettes and stuff like that. Sherry and I were more of roamers. So RV parks were not uh, 
I mean, there's definitely good and bad ones, but we didn't focus so much energy into some of these sites or just like, well, don't do this, don't do that. And yeah, there was times where we had guys playing music too long or somebody drank too much and they're loud, uh, started up motorcycles and stuff like that early in the morning. Some of them went to work and their car was a, a, a hog <laughs> and they'd start that up, you know, 6.30 in the morning every day to go to work. And uh, it's like, well, you know, you just got to kind of turn the other cheek, learn to sleep through it, whatever. And uh, don't let it get under your skin. Don't dwell on that stuff. That's too much stress. Life's too short to be all worried about what other people are doing. So, uh, yeah, we loved it. And uh, and I loved what the RV did to help with certain things that we needed to get done, where it was career-wise or or things like that, the RV turned out and still is a great tool. Right now, our RV is a, you might say, a rental property for us. <laughs> We're not paying rent on. Uh, we have it up at Central Oregon, which I've told you before, where it's uh, at Sherry's folks who both are in their 80s, uh, have a nice five-acre place. We used to live up there too. Um, and uh, we like to go up there, kind of want to take make sure they're doing all right. It's nice to know. In an emergency, we could shoot up there in an airplane quickly and have a place to stay. Um, it's been very nice, but we're getting to a point there. It's like, I've had it up there for a while. I need to get it home, make sure I do all the maintenance it needs to do, spiff it up, give it some detailing, uh, make sure it's good to last me another 5, 10, 15 years. So uh, it's been there too long, and uh, I'm going to hate not having it there, but I can take it back up there the following season. So uh, uh, we'll be up there in August, bring it home, then we're going to try to use it for some local stuff. After the winter's over, which is in Arizona, it's not a big deal. Uh, up, up north it is, so we can't really try to take it up back up there till winter's over, which is our summer down here. And so we'll enjoy the RV in the south. When the weather clears up, we'll probably take it back up there and... Uh, uh, knowing that we had it all spruced up, maybe had it serviced, uh, got everything working the way we want, and uh, uh, put it back up there for a while and uh, go with that. So, yeah, we love and, and we love our RV. And we, since we lived in our RV for quite a long time, when we get in it now, it feels like a home. It feels like a second home. We know all the cracks and crevices of that RV. Feels comfortable. We just uh, naturally relax in it, and uh, it's not, you know, uh, it just feels comfortable. We get get there, check it out, open the slides, get the generator fine, get everything charged up, add water, do all the things we need to do when we first get there, and uh, uh, de de get the critters out, <laughs> round them up, out, out, out and uh, reclaim our RV and uh, uh, gives us a warm and fun, fuzzy feeling knowing what that RV's done for us. Uh, it's been a great tool. It was a wonderful tool even before we uh, I retired. Uh, we had it set up as like a vacation home in Anacortes and the weekends uh, it was already set up. We'd just go up and there it was all set up already and uh, uh, just makes me smile when I think about our RV. So please don't ever make the mistake of thinking we don't love RVing. But uh, do realize that the severity of some of these channels and things of making that decision is everything has a cause and effect. And somebody should be telling you all the different aspects to think about. Not telling you what to do, but to take the information, just like, you know, you know, with your kids, you tell them stuff all the time, you should do this. But I mean, all, all different ages, all you can do for, to hope for the best is you tell them what you know, educate them, tell them what they probably don't want to hear, walk away, let them think it over and let them make their own decision. Hopefully your guidance, your information, your mentorship was uh, help them in making a good decision for themselves. Because uh, 
I don't care how many throughout life, no matter what age or century it was, uh, your decision process, your uh, maturity, all these kind of things are definitely affected over age. There's so many things I did in my 20s I would certainly not do at this age that I certainly would have thought through a little bit and stuff. But all we could ask for is when we're younger that people would tell us the yays and nays of everything and make the best decisions we could during our younger days. And it most of the time worked out. So yes, love your RV. Do, uh, love RVing. Love travel. Uh, make sure you understand what you're getting into. Getting into, And make sure you understand the cost. Make sure you understand the ins and outs, the etiquette things that are going on out there. The newer problems we're having in this generation as opposed to the prior generations. Understand the cost of parks, the cost of maintenance, and the cost of an RV now. Whew, goodness. But anyway, but all in all, it's no worse than like owning a boat. You love a boat, but boats are expensive. I've had them, believe me. And uh, like they said, the best day in your life is when you bought a boat, and the second best day in your whole life is when you sold it. And that situation could be for your RV too, so just be careful, that's all. So thanks once again. I appreciate the feedback we get. Uh, please uh, listen closely to our shows and you'll realize that we're very pro RV, but we're very realistic and also want to point out everything. So, And then you ultimately make your own decision. So, And hopefully we're part of that. So anyway, you guys, be safe. Thank you very much for listening. Until next week, be, um, get yourself an RV, man. Go buy an RV. Yep. Get, drop everything right now. Grab your wallet. Go out the door. Go buy an RV. <laughs> it's just that easy. Not. It's not that easy. Anyway, guys, talk to you later. Bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.